This next set of slides will review over the invertebrate lab practical. The lab practical will cover the following invertebrates, grasshoppers, squids, clams, earthworms, crayfish, starfish, worms, with a total of 50 questions. Now the next slides we will be reviewing over the structures you are held responsible for. Now on the uh, grasshopper, make sure that you know that the covering of the grasshopper is the exoskeleton. Be able to look at the ovipositors and determine if we have a male or a female. If you remember, V-shape would indicate female. Be able to identify the three body regions, the head, thorax, and abdomen. Uh, be able to identify the simple eyes, the compound eyes, the antennas, the tympanum for hearing, the ovipositors, the spiracles for breathing. Um, know that the malpigian tubules are used for removing waste. Um, know the jumping legs and the walking legs. On the squid, make sure you know that the mouth is called the beak. Uh, be able to identify the gills, the gonads, the pen, which is the internal skeleton, the ink sac, the siphons, the brain, and the tentacles with their suction cups. On the external portion, be able to identify the eye, again the tentacles, and then the mantle and the fins. On the clam, know that the bump that we see is called the umbo. The lines that we see are the growth lines. The dark covering is the periostracum. On the internal section of the clam shell, you will see the hinge teeth. The nacreous la layer, which means mother of pearls, is the shiny pearl layer. The paleo line is where the mantle of the clam attaches. You will see some various uh, muscle scars on the clam shell. With the clam muscle itself, you will see the gills, the mantle, uh, you will see some adductor muscles. Uh, you will find the heart up in this region right up in here. And then you would see the foot. On the earthworm, we have the mouth and the esophagus. Moving on down into the crop, the gizzard, and then into the intestines. Um, we have five hearts. Those are called the aortic arches. The seminal vesicles. And here we can see a dorsal blood vessel. On this we can see the cerebral ganglia, which are the, uh, the brain. We can see the mouth, the pharynx, moving down to the esophagus, crop, gizzard, and finally into the intestines. Uh, here we can see the rings that make up the uh, heart. The folds that increase the surface area for absorption are known as the typhlosol. The components on each section that remove waste are called the metanephridia. This band is called the clitellum, and this, this is closer to the anterior or head portion, and it's how we tell the head from the tail region. Um, also, we have setae which are on each of the 
sections and that allows for movement for grasping. Here we have the starfish and we're looking at the dorsal or the back and we can see the five rays. Here we have the major porite which is the opening to the water vascular system. We see the individual spines. Anus is located right here. On the next slide we will flip this. So here we have the uh, starfish and we're looking at the belly side, the ventral side. Right here is the mouth. Now it, it uh, everts or vomits up its stomach for absorption. Right along here we have the tube feet and the tube feet uh, move due to water pressure. Here we have finally dissected the um, starfish open. Now we have the stone canal here and if we look at this the stone canal would be attached to the um, major porite. So we would go major porite, stone canal leading down, ringed canals and then we would move out through our radial canals. From our radial canals we would have our ampulla and um, our tubed feet. And our ampulla and our tubed feet, if we look at it, and we'll just draw out a picture to show you. There we go. Looks something like a medicine dropper. And so our ampulla would be at the top. Our tube feet would be at the bottom. Uh, additionally, we can look at and see the two different stomachs that are present. And those would be in this area here. That would be the cardiac and the pyloric stomach. We would see some digestive glands and some gonads. We'll look on the next slide for those. Here we can see the pyloric stomach, and the pyloric stomach is on top, cardiac stomach is below. We can see the gonads here, the digestive glands here. Moving on to our crayfish. With our crayfish we can see the compound eyes, the nose is called the rostrum. Um, the body is divided into two regions, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. We have the chelipeds as the pinchers, the walking legs as our parapods, the swimmerettes as the pleopods, the uropods, which are on either side, and in the middle, the telson. With the uh, worms, we will be looking at the phylum platyhelminthes, and we will be looking at three classes. The tuberellia, which are the planarians, the trematodes, which are the flukes, and cestata, which are the tapeworms. Here we're looking at a planarian. This is the uh, class tubularia. We'll notice that we have the eye spots. We will have that arrow-shaped head. The pharynx would be located right here in the center part. Here we have our trematodes, or our flukes. The mouth would be located here. It would be an oral sucker. We would have the pharynx right there branching out into the intestines. This area here is all the uterus with the eggs. Uh, you got some ovaries here. Moving down, you still see the intestines and then the testes. Here we have Tania pisiformis, which is the uh, tapeworm for the dog. And when we look at it, we can see the hooks. We can also see that right here we have the uh, suckers. The head is called the scolex. Each of the segments uh, is lacking a digestive system. So it has the reproductive structures but no digestive system. Again, here we have the scolex or the head of the tapeworm as long as this is in the body an individual will still be infected with tapeworms. 
Now, the dog tapeworm is called Tania pisiformis. The beef tapeworm is called Tania cyginatus. This is Trichinella spiralis. And here we see the Trichinella eggs within the skeletal muscle. One gets this by eating undercooked or raw pork. And it is the larva or the embryos that cause trouble. And that's the eggs within the skeletal muscle causing the problems, not the adults. Here we have Ascaris lumbricoides. This is the largest roundworm to infect humans. Now we tell the male from the female because the male has a hooked tail and it's much smaller than the female. Here we have Enterobus vermicularis or pinworms.